Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to episode 4 of us playing as the Enclave. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalubber, but the Guardian Citadel. The Air Force decided, in the build-up to the Great War, to build a number of command and control bunkers to be used by high-ranking officials in the event of a crisis situation. One such bunker was built in western Nevada and the Monte Cristo mountain range, and we were able to reclaim it. Built into the volcanic rock of one of the many mountains within the range, the base was equipped with air launch facilities and a hangar, among other sections, to stay self-sustaining. To stay self-sustaining. While well, crisis situation most certainly did, not, did grip America, it's unknown whether or not the bunk was ever put uh, to use for its intended purposes. What we do know, however, is that at some point a sect of the Brotherhood of Steel came to find the bunker at Monte Cristo and turn it into their own base of operations. This sect became known as Guardians, and the base became as Guardian Citadel. But now the base is back in her hands, which allowed us to assess the damage which was done. Beyond being covered and filled with Guardians' own religious iconography, much of the old base still needed to be repaired. The dervish camouflage system typical to bunkers of this type and region appears to have been mounted improperly in the lead-up to the Great War. The base's former occupants couldn't get it up and running without the technical know-how which we possess, which means we now have the system back online. As well, the hangar and air launch facilities um, were brought back to operational capacity and the collapsed lower levels of the base were excavated. We can now build new workshops and facilities as we see fit, uh, after the name is chosen, of course. Monte Cristo Air Force Base. Citadel? Monte Cristo. Raid Legion. I still don't think we won't do that. And we got plenty of stuff here. Getting done. Very nice. And anything else here? No. Stockpile. Bloody Springs. Once a set of robot manufacturer, it would, it would, soon after the Great War, become the site of a great conflict that consumed inner Nevada. Automatic Campbell Geothermal Plant. Automatic Campbell isn't exactly a place as our scouts' charts would indicate. It's a thing. A pre war geothermal power plant. In fact, this particular plant built on the Grass Valley was a precursor to several other geothermal plants that were built across the West Coast during the Resource Wars, though this one is far more intact than the others are. The later tribes that lived here had no idea what they were sitting on, of course. The plant became their outpost, and when they used the geothermal vents uh, and warm to keep warm in the cold Nevada nights, with the plant now back in our hands, we can return to its full potential and then some. The question is now, what should we name it, of course, like everything else? Automat Campbell Geothermal Power Plant. Too wordy, leave the name B. I'll go with the state. Stay with the name. It's too wordy. You don't want things to be too wordy, so. And Silver Peak Lithium Mine. Silver Peak was one of Nevada's old mining towns, having been founded all the way back in the 1860s during World War II. The area was prospect for res precious resources, whereupon a deposit of lithium was discovered in the nearby dry lake bed. It wouldn't be until the 1960s that the deposit would be exploited, producing for over 100 years, long standing alone as the United States' only domestic source of lithium. The mine would eventually lose its title in the build-up to the resource wars, and other de deposits of domestic lithium, the biggest of which and being in McDermott in the north, was exploited in order to limit the United States' dependency on foreign imports. Um, Post-war, the mine did see a small amount of use, though rangers made a feeble attempt at using the lithium ion here for batteries and electricity production, however. With the mine back in her hands, and the lithium ion being loaned Long antiquated by microfusion, we know the lithium of the mine will be far better put to use in the building of advanced composites and cerama ceramics, which are far more valuable to us. I hope this lithium I'm mining will be used in your armor. That's a far less threatening tagline if I do say so myself. Claim states, oh yes, please. I have a feeling they're not going to survive. What exactly what we want? Gab's magnesium mine. Not magnesium, magnesia. That's a magnesium uh, oxide. Did you know that MGO has practical applications in a vast number of industries that include agriculture, chemical construction, environmental, and most notably refractory industries? It can be used as fertilizer in animal feed and wastewater treatment and underground water remediation. For fireproofing and cement production, as insulation and electrical cable, most commonly is used in lining furnaces, kilns, and other reactors for its chemical stability, high temperatures. It can even be used in the medical field for heartburn relief, among other treatments. Fascinating as all of this may be, what's even more fascinating is that the United States' one and only domestic producer of magnesia ore is right here in our own backyard in Gabs, Nevada. The raiders and tribes which have squatted on over the years have never had any use for them. But the raiders and tribes have never attempted to start an organized uh, industrial or agricultural capacity either. The mine has been put back to work and producing magnesium for us to restart America's great smelteries and more. Time to, be, to become a magnesium based life form. Legion question. That rat guy. Outside the Enclave control centers, America is nothing but a lawless wasteland overrun by mutant gangs, monsters, and haywire robots. It is our duty to return law and order. Our new manifest destiny. The lawless way will become America, even if we have to kill everything out there to ensure it. For children's future and for the future of America. Think of the children. Hmm. National Police versus Department of Peacekeeping. The myriad of maladies that threaten our good country need a centralized system that can respond to any threat with overwhelming force. Law abiding citizens need not worry. SWAT teams. 
Elite teams capable of handling even the toughest raider uh, gangs or mutant monsters, freeing up our troops to handle the real threats on the frontier. Huh. Twice in two lifetimes. Very cool. Just slowly, slowly just taking them all out. To dinner, of course. That's where we want to take them. Ah, oh, beautiful. Just gotta love it. Did you say grab territory was next? Gravos. Happy February, everybody. It's gonna be a good year. Gas Town was once a Poseidon Energy, uh, Poseidon Oil Refinery. Then if we can be that again, today we're headed to Gas Town, huh? Interesting. Beautiful Las Vegas, Robert House, one of the most brilliant minds of our day. We offered him a spot within our own numbers. On the rig, even gave him money and funny. However, he declined to join us on the rig, saying he was handling a private affair in Vegas. Now we know why the guy used us, used our forward thinking his own gain, the rap. Somehow he's still alive, hold up in a little casino like some king. He should, uh, he should. No, America is not Atlanta Kings. The enclave of America does not like being double crossed. He owes a lot of back taxes. I don't care if he's a pure human. Protecting Vegas, we need that city. It is our city, not his. Oh. The house may always win, but Uncle Sam gets his cut. Hoover Dam affair. Lance here might have been pushed around by House, but not America. Let's see his precious Vegas survive it with his main power supply cut off. Hardpoint targeting. Vegas is protected by a line of robots we've never seen before. Scaretrons. Regardless, it's like all robots, they can be destroyed by targeting the weak spots and weak points. Absolutely beautiful. Adavan? Adavan? Adavan. Multi deck construction, triremes. Who's justifying on us? Oh, Lost Hills. And. Never, what? Well, don't think I need to really worry about that, but whatever. Alright, whatever. There you go. City 318, a ghostly city in the middle of Nevada wilderness. There's more to City 318 than the old Wasteland legends say. Swap teams, nice. Happy March. Once well, a ranger outpost guarding the Quinn Canyon Range, outpost Quinn surrounded by a history of intrigue and conspiracy before the war. It's not ideal. Found the expedition, pretty normal. Power armor is good. Don't have enough money still. Once we get to Vegas, it'll be fine. Mole, they're not worried. Bloody Springs robot manufactory. Once upon a time, the Bloody Springs was a site of a Robco uh, uh, manufactory. The facility is a marvel of modern engineering in its day, being completely automated and having its mainframe run by an advanced computer AI. The plan turned out protectrons in the thousands, single handedly automating much of the American workforce. With the Great War came, however. The plan continued to run all on its own. Logs from within the factory's mainframe suggest that because the orders in the queue were not technically being fulfilled, more protectrons had to be made. And when that did not do anything to alleviate the order fulfillments, it began questioning why. When it came to the conclusion that nobody was actually showing up to work anymore, and so nobody could actually fulfill these orders, I found such a conclusion to be in the direct conflict with this programming as such. I took control of the protectrons it built and sent them out to the wastelands. Its goal? Take over the world in the name of fulfilling its order. While well, certainly getting near taking over the world, it did wreak havoc on Nevada for a good few years. That was until the backlog of unfulfilled orders multiplying on themselves caused AI's memory to fry itself. To this day, the region is littered with the remnants of the gallant attempt at world domination. The bones of men and robot alike scatter the desert floor now. Though the facility is back in our hands, we've cleaned it out for use by our own industries, unfortunately. While the protectrons did have protocols to maintain themselves and each other over the centuries, the facility itself fell into disrepair. Nearly all the manufacturing equipment at the plant will need to be replaced. The only two questions now remain what should we fill the facility with, and what should we name it? Why don't you give it back to Robco? Change the name of Bloody Springs to Robco Nevada Facility Number 7. Bloody Springs got the name for a reason. Seemed like the army would find a better use for it. Bloody Springs Army. Oh, I, like, I like Bloody Springs. It gives it a nice western charm to it. Nellis Air Force Base. 
A brilliant jumping off point for attack on Vegas. It's our old base at Nellis. A quick rapid insertion of troops should be enough to overcome whoever the heck is owning it. Might make it just a tad bit easier to even take it too. Looking pretty good. Very nice. Family stipends might be good at lifetime pensions. We might go there too. Let's keep making a little more money first and we'll do that. Advanced circuitry. Repair the next turbine is good. The Wrath of Kai is all. Eventually we'll use tanks, but I need more industry first. Oh, look at that. Oh, we're gonna go to War of the Burrows. Well, actually, we don't. That doesn't expire. So. Cloning failure, most, most recent experimentation, including human clones, has resulted in a less than ideal outcome. The resulting specimen's been terminated, and we'll need to start back from scratch course. Um. We have also been recommended to put both science team and cleanup crew involved in the administrative leave until they pass psychological evaluations. Back to the drawing board. Well, once we get all these done, we'll get, build the thing up there too. Beautiful. It's fine. Defenses are online. That's good. Sorry for uh, Vandenberg Air Force Base. And Nellis Air Force Base, too. Well, the base was under the stewardship of a series of vaults sending tribals that kept the place running. Nellis is more important to the government than tribals. I would imagine so. I want us to have good stuff to use, not crap. City 318, deep in the eastern Nevada, stands a city, eerily constructed in the fashion of a pre-war city, which is no pre-war chart. Uh, I'll point out, it's known as City 318, while while it stands now as a real city, that wasn't always the case. Look at that. Before the war, City 318 was a weapons testing facility belonging to the Baishi Company. A company, research facility, was built from the center of its hollowed out mound alongside the White River, around it. A dummy city was built to test the effectiveness of new flame weaponry in the urban centers of China. A city would be built on the site using Chinese building techniques and materials reassembling those using China. Then, the city would be burned to the ground while the bunker would observe from the center of it all. The name of the city was always a number, and the Great War struck just before the 318th iteration of the city could be completed. When the city was found by survivors of the Great War, they settled there, not questioning how or why the city was built. The bunker of the mountain shadowing the city became the little step of legends, as no one was able to breach its doors, unfortunately. For the researchers present at the laboratory when the Great War began, the facility's lockdown procedures malfunctioned, and tombing them all inside, thankfully, the facility responded to our access codes. Um, and we were able to access and restore with a minimal expenditure, as it was in very con condition, good condition. Now that the facility is back in our hands, the question becomes what do we do with it? Give it back to the company? Give it to the army. Welcome to City 318. Department of Peacekeeping, uh, sub Department of the Army. Soldiers tasked with maintaining the peace under more frontier lands or newly returned areas by enemies necessary. House of Cards. House built his little city state on the back of mutants. He should know the mutants are not to be trusted, especially when one of them contacted us. Family Fair. Families in New Vegas are on Knife's Edge, kept in line by house, just like New Reno. If we take the scales one way, the whole place can come crashing down. False flagging. A few of the Mojave's worst fiends captured, sedated, and secretly smuggled in Vegas, drugged, and unleashed upon the strip to dress a certain family members is more than enough to set the whole ship on the edge. Outpost Quinn has a long and stored history, both before and after the Great War. Post war, it stood as an outpost of the Desert Rangers. Before that, it numbers dwindled. Uh, pre war, it was a research facility and air base of less the far infamous Area 52. Uh, also known as uh, a Tonopa test range, Area 52 had a long standing history as a top secret aircraft and nuclear weapons testing facility. Originally built in the 1950s, the site was hosted numerous uh, nuclear weapons tests during the America's arms race with the Soviet Union in the 20th century and again during the build up to the Great War in the 21st. However, it never acquired nearly the infamy which its cousin, Area 51, received to the south due to its focus on advanced flight research and not the extraterrestrial. The facilities of Area 52 were expanded into the tw late 2050s. 
A sizable set of bunker complexes were constructed and a new air fleet was or airfield was built to the north as a sister facility to the Tonopah Test Range Airport for the west. Post war, the entire installation was abandoned and eventually occupied by the Desert Rangers. They used facilities there as an outpost which guarded the furthest eastern borders of Nevada against the Raiders of the Quinn Canyon Range. Inevitably, the outpost was overwhelmed by Raider incursions when the Desert Rangers began losing their strength in the mid 2200s after being kicked out of Arizona by Kaiser's Legion. Now that we own the base, however, we will be able to reestablish it in the airbase. Much of the valuable research data was held there uh, was unfortunately lost when the servers corrupted, but the base itself should have value in our push for the east. All that's left is to set the name. Outpost Quinn? I like Outpost Quinn. Why not? Keep it for now. What else we got here? So once we're done with that, we're just going to keep justifying more people. A time of justifying and subjugation is here. Yes, town, huh? House of Cards. Yeah, we got all this to do. Mark of the Mutant, huh? Today we're headed to Gastown and we ain't hauling Nuka Cola. The place known as Gastown was beside an oil refinery built to refine shale oil, and uh, which came from deposits further east. Most of the oil produced uh, went to fuel the Gecko City power plant. That was until the shale deposits began to run low, and the power plant of Gecko was converted to nuclear. That was not the end of the refinery's pre-war history, however. The Red uh, House the refinery also found itself covered in Poseidon, by Poseidon into a research station dedicated to synthetic oil experiments and chemical processing. When the Great War inevitably gained. The refinery was inhabited by a significant population of survivors who took refuge from the radioactive dust storms in the great underground tunnel system below the refinery. Their descendants are those who emerged in the aftermath began farming the land around them, herding the new mutant livestock on motorbikes powered by fuels made in the refinery came to be known as a gas town. Getting the refinery back into working order was an incredible challenge with many of the winding pipes throughout the facility needing to be fully replaced. Luckily, the refinery was serviced by its own rail uh, yard pre-war, which we were able to impress into service in quick order to help among the restoration process. All that's left is to give it a name. While its name was before the war was Red House Refinery, some point at the facility had been called Gaston for over 200 years. Oh, Gaston, House of Cards. As laughable as the idea of mutant tribals playing Rome and football pads is, the Legion is actually a formidable foe. They were enough to put the NCR in defense, keep the Brotherhood at bay, and have more or less a stabilized Arizona. Kaiser's brutal tactics, an uncompromising view of no failures made to the Legion or force to be reckoned with. One American soldier in power armor may be worth 10 uh, veteran legionaries, but there's a hundred of them for every power armored American Legion. Or for every power armored American. We should take a minute and plan our move against the Legion. Those mean families acting like gangsters. Get a house to kill the Freeside Rabble. Oh. It's a family affair, you know? Oh, what is this? Hidden Valley? Wait. Hidden Valley still exists? Oh, no. It's with all the space. There you go. Now it's ours. And drug down a crap ton of uh, resistance. Oh, now you're getting plus. Let's save the locals. I mean, oh, you can do this one too. Why would we do anything else? This is minus 100. That's minus 70. And this is better. Plus 0.5 compliance versus 0.35. That's better. Resistance at 150% more. No, we need 150% more. Garrisons compared to the 25% we need here. Why would we choose anything else? This is literally still the best one. And they, as they should be enslaved. Not a glass. Why do we keep losing people here? What the heck? Mm, who do we want next? The Washington Brotherhood, led by the enigmatic, enigmatic immortal, the Washington Brotherhood smears the first president's great name. It's going to try to outtech us, all of which is an affront to our species. Now, finally, we can start doing this. What are we doing? Are we just finally get everybody now. Um, we might go to war with these guys first. Oh, it takes 35 days, that's fine. I right, forced them to defense. Interesting. So, guy, hi. One of the strategic air command's assets on the west coast, Vandenberg, was being known for the center of the 24 hour strategic bombing targets, or bombing against targets across the Pacific and China, coordinating with bases in the Pacific for refueling, meaning it was a prime target for nuclear weapons. Much of the base lays in ruins, though it wasn't much of a challenge for getting it back into operational capacity. The Air Force was eager to restore its old bomber fleet, though its purpose may be called into question. Let's move east and out of the range of bombers from the base. Very nice. Figured you get some love and whatnot. There you go. Oh, here you go. Do that too. 
Yeah, it should be pretty easy. Seven gods versus 600? No, uh, I've had better. Vegas' downfall. For the first time in living memory, the casinos on the New Vegas Strip failed to open for business this morning, largely thanks to their annihilation of the fierce fight against the Enclave for days. Fighting the Red Strip, uh, strip Rage, the Securitrons and Moab's Lord of the great families of the casinos attempted desperately to prevent their precious city from falling to hostile powers. Ultimately, the Strip was lost, but even the families of the Strip continued to stubbornly defend the casinos. Following a direct order from Anderson, the casinos were demolished with the last mobsters inside them, much to the dismay of the soldier Keenan looting the riches. Securitrons, meanwhile, withdrew in the direction of the Mojave weather monitoring system, although attempts to find them have so far been unsuccessful. Vegas was rebuilt once, and it can be again. After them, we're going to do the Seraph Lords. That's not bad, you guys. Pretty easy. Slanter and Eastport, huh? Nice. Advanced combat stimulants. I love it. I love stimulants. And rescue team, of course. Hidden Valley, once a highly secret Air Force installation, Hidden Valley became occupied by the Brotherhood of Steel's Mojave's expedition some years ago. Now that it's back in our hands, we can begin its uh, restoration. Mount no, Charleston Bunker, one of the highly uh, secret, advanced, and highly secret uh, safe houses. The location of the bunker of Mount Charleston was unfortunately lost to us until now. It was really out of time, huh? Getting in exile, huh? Good. Good for them. Pretty fast and easy. Way we like it. Mount Charleston Bunker, across North America, uh, a number of small, highly secret bunkers were built by the Enclave's precursor, the Cabal. These bunkers were meant to act as safe houses and refueling points for vertebrates near cities of high value, unfortunately. The secretive nature of these bunkers means that their whereabouts were lost when the rig went down, and there may be no way to recover them without first uh, prior first-hand knowledge. Thankfully, some of our old, older veterans have brought forward the location of one such bunker in the outskirts of the Las Vegas Valley near Mount Charleston, La Small. Uh, its technical technology rivals that of some of our most advanced bases across America. It'll be worth their while to efficient state as an installation. That may be old, but they still got some tricks left. Cool. Nice. I wait for them to die first, too. Cloning failure? Well, that sucks. percent chance that it'll go all right. I heard this one before as well. Any terrain trades? Yes. Injured, whatever, it's fine, it's just a flesh wound. Walk it off. Uh, what do we got here? It's fine. What is this? Goggle planes. Well, we could pair drop. Yeah, we'll keep them alive for now. I'm sure, we can find these for later. Any more uh, vertebrates, please? Glory Falls. That's good. <sighs> Battle barges. They're not bad. I don't even remember what we're researching now. Tugboats, patrol boats. Patrol boats? Sure. Good 
You know, that's fine. Infinity Knights, huh? Hidden Valley. Uh, the Air Force decided in the build-up of the Great War to build a number of command and control bunkers to be used. While high-ranking officials in the event of a crisis situation, one such bunker was built in southern Nevada, in the middle of the McCullough Range, and we were able to reclaim it. Building of the Hidden uh, Valley base, and the bunker was furnished with every facility needed to continue its operations in, in case of a catastrophic event. Though the interference employed at Hidden Valley, which included its dervish camouflage system and countermeasures from Black Mountain and Las Vegas, may have saved it from a direct nuclear strike. The base was eventually abandoned for reasons unknown to us. Much of the base fell into disrepair for this, and vast sections of the bunkers collapsed. Fortunately, the Mojave chapter brought portions of the back of the base back online over the last few years and been dutifully maintaining it. Though they did nearly push the air filtration system to the brink by ruining or running the dervish countermeasures every single night. Fortunately, we came along when we did. However, with much. Uh, while they did much to keep the base running, they had nowhere near the time, map, or resources, or even inclination that we had, had to bring to hit a valley back to the, its full capacity. Much of it has been excavated, restored, and refurbished, and now we can fulfill fill with new workshops and facilities as we see fit. Uh, the term name has been chosen, of course. Hidden Valley Air Force Base? Hidden Valley? Hidden Valley Air Force Base. Hidden Valley Air Force Base. Why not? 35 days? That's fine. Or should I say 0.34 years ahead of time? It's whatever. Fine. Begin again. Since the Enclave has been a common and established government, we've been uh, restrained by the wasteland economy. However, the rumors of a hidden casino off in the mountains of the Mojave that contain riches beyond anyone's belief. Um. Back by a strange radio signal stating to begin again in the Sierra Madre, unfathomable riches are what could be the most effectively used to our own gain, however. Everyone who's ever ventured there has never returned. Followers, prospectors, and CR army. And rangers, even a brother assassin's gone missing venturing to that forbidden place. It's a great risk, one that we can easily prepare for with the might of the U.S. Army. Plus, the benefit of a pre separate pre-war casino could make the oysters forget their woes for a little while and take some power away from the from New Vegas. New casino, I'll get my best suit. Yeah, well, I like the I like the change. Uh, Uncle Lab command structure was always geared towards surgical strikes and limited deployment. Whether well, right. adjustments this adoption could be depth for a much larger scale war. Ah. Of the den. Strange enough attacking us, but alright. Whatever. Are they have 50 divisions? Well, they did have 50 divisions. They no longer have 50 divisions. I said they like 45 now. 42. Nice. Give it up, guys. You're doing a good job. You're making America proud. Ballistas. Beautiful. Some of places are going to be a giant pain in the butt, butt to do this. Approaching in the Sierra Madre, our expedition was made up of scavengers, followers, scientists, a few caravan guides, uh, government archaeologists, and a heavy contingent on the U.S. Army. A vertebra flyover is pinpointing exact location based on caravan maps and old brochure we found. Reports from the pilots reported a strange orange cloud that seemed to be emanating from the resort. As our expedition approached by foot, they encountered the cloud which rapidly corroded and destroyed a protection scout we sent in to analyze the cloud. A soldier in advanced power armor was almost lost when he entered the collect entered to collect a sample and tried to be cut out of his armor. Thankfully, he succeeded in his mission, but it will be sent via Airfac to New Vegas for treatment. A base camp has been set up and a sample of gas clouds has been sent to Sierra, Sierra Armor Depot for testing. That's weird. All that for a casino? Pretty standard. Once we've got more than enough Mr. Handy Robots, we can use... Uh, Start garrisoning everything. Is that possible? It actually might be possible. I don't know. You can try it out. It might be good. It might not be good. How would you like not all to go that one way? I don't have any tanks here, huh? Kind of bad and sad.
the cloud. The chemical core has been stood in the poison cloud that permeates the Sierra Madre. It's horrific, horrifically corrosive, self-replicating and toxic to the skin and lungs. It preserves dead flesh, seems to have mutagenic properties. And, why, and why it was in a pre-war casino resort, we have no idea. Pretty standard for pre-war America, though. It's for weakness. It seems resistant to everything conventional we've thrown at it. We can incinerate it, but only at incredibly high temperatures. And these beyond residue, we have to dissolve in acid. Cryogenic sour seems to have the best effect. Reason the particles and causing them to fall to the ground, while well, it doesn't neutralize it. It is allows collective for acid disposal. This may be our only chance to pierce this cloud and find the source of the strange cloud, for uh, there it can be frozen, dissolved, and hopefully forgotten about. I guess I should just chill out then. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, that was really fast. Nice. Hey, look at that. Now you get the entire thing. Well, you guys get this side there and there, there and there. We are here to be on a roll. Creator like mutant containment zone. What was previously Mariposa's dumping grounds later became a focal point for Oregon's super mutant infestation. They seem to hold in some reference, all oh, probably because of the vast quantities of FEV in the place. Regardless, the area has become seen as part of the perfect prison to contain these freaks of nature, though we're sure to only put in the dumb green ones, not the smart ones like the ones called Nikens. Thankfully, their dim-witted intelligence makes them easy to crown control, and any attempted authority we can rapidly put down. We will, of course, monitor and ensure that none of them will ever get out. There's always a nuclear option. Yeah, there's always a nuclear option. Nice. Streamline VB002 production, the VB02 gunship is a symbol of Enclave's power. While capable of producing them, we have always had relied on military cash to grow their numbers. It's time we took. And uh, look towards future and, and build rather than loot. It just makes sense, ma'am. It just makes sense. McDermott lithium mine. Built on the buildup. Uh, to the resource wars, the mine of McDermo Salad to become one of the largest lithium mines in the world, its value cannot be understated. The Boomers of Nellis Air Force Base, descended from the Vault 34. The child that became the Boomers took relative uh, care for Nellis Air Force Base, although times change. And the base was rightfully back in American hands. So restoring the base was the easy part. Much of it having already been repaired from the tribe that lived there. Getting the solar array back online proved more difficult, and there was a curious infestation of exploding ants beneath the base that has been dealt with. Though not without some close calls. The base is ready to receive increased aircraft activity, and will once again be defending America's skies from threats abroad, even if abroad means over in Arizona. Well, let's keep running the place. That's good. Chase Custer. Tucker Hunter. Sure. Why not? Oh, White Cedar Wonderland. The crowd plan worked with armed engineers and modified vehicles and power armor cut a hole through the cloud from there. The frozen particles were collected for dispersal, or disposal, and a corridor of industrial fans were installed to supply the engineers working the way to the resort. As they approached the city, however, they started taking fire from a series of crazy travels and hazmat suits living in the resort fill-up. Being that we didn't expect anyone to be alive, our troops weren't equipped to return fire and were forced to call in air support while reinforcements arrived. After a few hours of advancing under, under fire for a seemingly uh, unending number of tribals, we reached the gates of the Sierra Madre and are pre pre prepping to enter the resort now. The casino's worth it, right? Oh yeah. You bet it is. The more everyone kills each other, the easier it is for us to uh, do a full wasteland conquest. Oh, of course, going failure again. Why would we want to have success? You know? Build up a lot of roads. Eventually, it won't even matter. They come in, uh, they subjugate everybody, and, but they build a lot of roads. Using all that manpower they subjugate people with. Like, then again, they're not people, they're mutants. Uh, good enough now, let time go on. Is it all on? That's good. Happy November.
Oh, hello. Well, I guess we do share a border now, finally. Well, whatever. Let's go in real quick fast. There you go. So now we are in the defensive war. Interesting. Well, there's only way for, one way for them to enter. Alright, that's fine. Weird, but okay. Spies, we're almost done with all that stuff. Streamline production, tariff leaf is done. Uh, what do we want? Liberty reprimed. Pre war, Robco worked with the Pentagon to create the ultimate weapon of war to reach Anchorage. Sadly, even we have to agree with him that the buffoons we left in Pen the Pentagon were too grandiose and let the project waste. Seems House wasn't willing to let it die. Further shore naval base Ventura, a diverse base just on the north wall was Los Angeles. The base served as a strategic supply base for naval forces moving towards China, yet, curiously, wasn't targeted during the Great War. Odd. But whatever. Shore naval base San Diego, of course. Why would we not, you know? As we're just smashing a royal. Ah, <sighs> very good. And we literally did all the work, so... Come on. Liberty Reprime for all his false house. I was right about one thing, the idiots. That we left at the Pentagon to run things were fools in creating a towering monstrosity in Liberty Prime. What a waste of taxpayer money that could have gone to us. However, he kept the schematics and actually improved upon their design. He de designated it Vegas Prime. We're not actually going to call it that. Well, however, mass produced the things to aid in our conquest of America. A legion of these things marching, each throwing a mini nuke. Like it's a football, no army will stand a chance. Let's see the brother do this. Ghost in the villa. No, uh, what were you to buy? It's as if we didn't have to worry about the NCR. There seems to be just as a powerful. Even more technolog technologically backwards, the rebel nation occupying Arizona. But then they're not a football team. A pitch fire fighter up in the streets of the villa as our troops engaged with an endless number of what we thought were crazed, demented tribals after capturing one alive. We managed to tear the suit and his head off to reveal not a man, but, but a mutant. One we've never seen before. This is to explain why they managed to get up after taking dozens of lasers to the face and only disintegration or dismemberment seemed to work. Upon learning that, our troops went uh, forewent their issued weapons, so using cryogenic equipment to freeze large amounts of them, and then shatter them with well-placed punches and even a few kicks. This gave us an advantage for a time. We managed to establish four command posts in the form of a police station. Curiously, we found evidence of a super mutant having been in the station, but was nowhere to be found. Operations to clear the villa will continue through the week. On well, an interesting note, our troops have begun collecting Sierra Magic tokens as a sort of keepsake for their ventures. Well, so I'm trying to collect as many as possible. It's too much. Give me the Air Force. They're just feral mutants. We've, well, we've handled feral mutants. I don't care if they get back up uh, afterwards. Just shoot them again. Just shoot them, shoot them, shoot them, shoot them. And when you're done, shoot them again and again and again and again. Uncle Sigma. Well, Cloak and Daggers, no. Nice. America needs to take direct action against their foes if we're going to have any hope of defeating them. And we know who just to use. The Fall of Arroyo. Mr. President, as you're reading this communication, Uncle troops are marching through the capital city of the backward tribe of Arroyo. Our troops are reporting only token resistance from the locals and using primitive weapons. Our only casualties were sustaining, uh, sustained battling a small band led by a figure in a vault suit. As the time this message was sent, all hostiles in the area are confirmed KIA. Remember the rig and show no mercy. McDermott Lithium Mine is next, too. Anyway, Sanders charts in the North Nevada show a big, big red X. And here be Death Claws through a sizable region known as the McDermott Desolation. While this is, of course, the way Sanders Desolation is the word of the day. It doesn't take much looking around to find out why the region has earned its name. What was once a wilderness might have been, there exists now on a terra on the skin of the earth, as uh, though God himself called down his own orbital death lasers and glass around 
the ground for miles before salting on his way out. There's only one word to use when describing what's left of McDermott. Desolation. But why? Obviously the wasteland. Or obviously the wasteland is no stranger to environmental catastrophe and devastation. But what made McDermott so special? Well, it's what's that under McDermott that drew the destruction here. A vast deposit of lithium. One of the largest in the world, in fact, in the late 2050s, a mining corporation purchased the land and began development of the McDermott Lithium Mine. In true blue pre-war corporate fashion, however, construction of the mine became at a heavy human and environmental cost. Thousands of acres of the natural environment were destroyed to make way for the operation, causing vast dust storms that significantly decreased the air local air quality. While environmentalists protested, they were violently and often lethally quashed by both authorities and corporate mercenaries in the end. The mine was built and produced for a few short years before the Great War brought the world to an end. All that remained until we arrived were derelict pieces of mining equipment and the devastation which the mine left behind. In spite of all this, though, we can at least take solace in the knowing that the damage has already been done. We've now reestablished a mine extracting lithium to be used in the production of advanced composites and ceramics. It sure did earn the name. Cleansing the Villa we managed pushing the Puesta del Sol and Salida del Sol with an endless number of ghost people attacks becoming more and more desperate, made worse by the fact that the narrow streets prevent precision vertebrate strikes. Observation of has seen the ghost people emerging from under the city, prowling the city's sewer main shafts. The commander of the expedition has opted to create a hole in the city's central fountain uh, in the villa. This would open more a uh, massive cavern from which a prepared defense could be used to annihilate the swarms of ghost people we theorize are down there, and the venture of the guns blazing to eradicate the rest. The risky gamble might work. Find the roots of these monsters. Find the roots. And just gas them all. We're here to restore America no matter what. Get out of our way if you do not want America to be back. Ah. Combat barge. We found a survivor. Wait, where's the combat barge? Combat barge. Tugboat hull. Pushing into the residential district, we began standard building clear clearing procedures, hampered only by the prevalence of that darn cloud. <clears throat> During the course of the war, troops were surprised to come across a survivor an intelligent ghoul by the name of Dean Domino. The famous pre-war singer, while we're, while we're surprised to survive the song, he's just as surprised the U.S. government is still a thing. He managed to smooth talk his way into having your troops not shoot him, but he remains trapped in his room. According to him, he's working alongside a courier who was making his way through the Sierra Madre, and after being a series of events, we find it hard to believe. I was already ready to return to the world, but stopped by his old room to collect a few things. However, one of the ghost people followed him, and in the ensuing scuffle broke his leg. He's been healing ever since, and we heard us approaching, he decided to lay low for a little longer until the shooting stopped. He asked for medical assistance. It's a goal, I don't care if it can sing. Pretty much. Pretty much. With no end to the ghost people inside and the constant threat of the cloud, progress has been slow and what's slow. Managed to take the Villa Clinic, which is home of a series of advanced auto docks, making the place a prime location for our forward aid station, attempting to push across the street. Our forces were pinned down by the highly accurate sniper fire. This is not an act of ghost people. This is someone who knew how to handle soldiers in power armor. After an agonizing few hours dueling with some of the expedition's best sharpshooters, a copious use of auto dock, we cornered the assailant in what we could guess where they stayed this entire time. An assault team was being prepared to storm the place, but we recognized the situation outside the place as the wings, gears, and sword of the Brotherhood. Another Brotherhood Terrace, of course. Out of the swarm, the detonation were creating a massive opening in the depths of the ghost people's supposed haven, or hive. For a few moments, this was eerily quiet, then our ships heard the howling of the swarm, and hundreds of the things came scrambling out. The prepared defense position was nearly overrun, with the ghost people clamoring over dead bodies and ash piles were rising what and they collapsed. It was a uh, <clears throat> time intervention of the vertebrate strikes to save the position. Our troops advanced into the dungeon below. The laser fire could be heard from the surface, and the team's commander is questioning or requesting cryogenic support due to the copious amount of cloud that's down there. How many are down there? Lots. A furbish battle tanker, huh? Battle barges are out. Do you have any upgrades here? Enough for that, huh? That sucks. Sniper down or assault team pushing on the safe house, finding a lone, scarred, yet determined woman inside. She tried to put up a fight, but unarmored and armed with only the fish, she had no chance. One of the soldiers got a lucky shot off with his rifle, laser rifle, and she was reduced to ash on the spot. Whoever she doesn't was, it doesn't matter. Another brother insurgent down for the count. Good. Get back to clearing the Sierra Madre. 
a cursed shelter. Cleaning crews and a few archaeologists have entered from behind her troops to sift through the wreckage and clean the free frozen cloud residue. A few discovered a set of notes written by the predecessors of the ghost people, preserved through time by the cloud. Upon reading it, we discovered to a horror that the ghost people are the mutated remains of the S uh, resort's construction crew, staff, and police. Many of them curse and clear the previous owner, and others have expressed horror of what's become of them. A few others, probably medical staff, documented the mutation. Tragedy aside, the openings effectively opened a second front under the cleansing of the Sierra Madre, with surface forces pushing into the villa, and a third team being prepared to assault the resort casino itself. Compared to some vaults, they got off easy, but unfortunately, and this is terrible news, as you can tell by the title, uh, we, this campaign is now done and over with, unfortunately. I'd love to continue doing the focus stream and whatnot. We're going through every single focus, taking out everybody in the wasteland, but uh, the game keeps crashing, unfortunately. Every time I hover over um, yeah, uh, uh, the declare war button for any nation, whether I wanted to go to War of the Apostles, the Den, Washington Brotherhood, the game literally just crashes. So unfortunately, uh, our time here uh, as the Enclave trying to restore America as a genocidal warlord, unfortunately for now, is over. Uh, how, however, in the future, I would like to play as them again, because why not? I always play as the Enclave, at least once or twice, three four times a year, because it's an awesome campaign. But the Enclave dream, it's time to fully realize the Enclave's dream. A dream of America, of the white picket fences, of tranquility, a land truly free. Free of communists or mutants, where liberty-loving Americans can live safely at home, knowing that those who question their livelihood will be brought back to heel. After 200 years, America's back, so as much as I want to do all that stuff, I just, it sucks that the game keeps crashing. And I apologize, I'd love to finish out the campaign, but it is what it is currently. But if you enjoyed the campaign, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching, have a tremendous rest of your day.